Greetings to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Listen, here at South Union, we worship with celebrities. You didn't know? You haven't heard? Do you know who I'm speaking of? I'm talking about the one and the only sister and mother, Maloney Johnson. Happy birthday, Sister Johnson, 100 years strong. We thank God. We thank God for his tremendous blessings. We thank God for your presence. We thank God for your pattern. And we thank God that you can celebrate these 100 years. We salute the Johnson family. We salute Sister Johnson. We salute Brother Johnson. Uh, we thank God for them, and we thank God for their mother, whom they have allowed us to love and adore down through the years. 100 years is a long time to be on the battlefield for the Lord. And so we just want to pause and just say thank you, Sister Johnson. We love you, and we know that you're kicking. Keep on kicking for King Jesus. We give you all of our well wishes, and we want you to know, yeah, that we love you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. 100 years. Happy birthday, Mother Maloney Johnson. Happy 100 years, young Sister Maloney Johnson from the Jacobs family. We love you. Hey, Sister Johnson. Happy 100th birthday. To you from William and Catherine McDaniel. Make it a good one. And remember, we're kicking, but not hot. Bye. Happy birthday, Happy Sister Johnson. Johnson. We love, love you very much. much. For brother and sister John, John Ellis. Ellis. Happy birthday, Sister Johnson. We love you from the Kellys and the Youngs. Sister Maloney Johnson, happy birthday. Happy 100th birthday, Centennial. And I know you're still kicking. I know you're still moving. I know it's still hard to catch you getting out that door at the end of service. So let me just get you right now. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. This is Brother Reeves and Sister Johnson. Just appreciate you and, and your years here at South Union and, and all that you do and have done. Uh, congratulations. Uh, this is quite an achievement. God has blessed you and continues to bless you. We love you, and as Brother Tucker may say, there's not a thing you can do about it. Sister Maloney Johnson, happy 100 year birthday from brother and sister Rockmore. Congratulations, we love you. Happy birthday, Sister Johnson. We love you, there's not a thing you can do about it. And as you always say, don't start none and it won't be none. God bless you. Hello, Sister Johnson. This is Brother Thompson. I want to wish you a merry, happy, happy birthday to you. A lot hope I can be able to see that too. Anyway, thank you for all that you've done. We love you. Hello, how you doing? Happy birthday. Wow, 100 years. That's a, a mighty, mighty, mighty awesome achievement. God has blessed you. We wish you many more. Happy birthday, Sister Johnson. My favorite classmate. We came in the gospel together. Happy congratulations on 100 years. God has blessed us. Hope I'll achieve the same, but I'm glad to know that one of my favorites did make it. Enjoy yourself. God bless you. Hello, oh, Sister Maloney. We love you, sweetheart. And as we say around here, the thing you do about it. I know you're kicking at this point, just not too high. But we love you and we look forward to seeing you again as soon as possible. Hang in there, girl. Love you. Feel, made me feel my 
mighty time when he lifted my burdens and he took away all my sins. Oh, he washed me Watch in me his blood. about all your troubles and your trials. Because right now it ain't about you. It's about all the Father. Come on up in here. Right now. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you. Why y'all? For you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah. Together, together, together. That's why we worship Worship. Oh, I need some believers up in here, sir. Come on. We worship to you yeah. in this house. I present my body. I need a witness of it. A living sacrifice. Give you all the glory. Give you all the glory. We give you all of the glory right now. Do I have any true believers up in here? Have to be old to praise him. Come on, young folk. I got some young folk I, up in here. I know that the hour comes. Yeah. I know that the time is right now. Right now. Hello and good evening, family, and welcome to Bible study. God is a great God. He has blessed us yet again with another beautiful day. Listen, we have a reason to praise his holy name. He's been good to us, not just on today, but all of our lives. The Lord has preserved us. He has provided for us. He has protected us. And even in this moment right now, we still give him glory. We still offer him the most high praise for he is worthy to be praised. It is our prayer that things are well with you and your family. And as we gather here for this sacred time of Bible study, we pray that you will share this message. Uh, let your friends and your family know who are living abroad uh, that it's time to study the Bible, the Word of God. I need my soul to be refreshed. I need my spirit to be renewed. And if you're like me, we've had so much going on in our lives, so much going on in the community until every now and then you just need to pull in to God's refueling station and let the Lord top you off with love and top you off with mercy and top you off with grace. Uh, is there anyone who needs a little more faith, a little more strength, a little more endurance uh, to continue uh, this journey? I know that uh, if you're like me, you're just thankful for the great blessings of God and you trust him that the same blessings that he's provided uh, to you and through you in times past, he will continue to do great things with you in the future and in the years to come. Listen, before we begin, we must pause for the cause. May we reverently bow and pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Lord God, we come giving you all of the glory. We give you all of the praise for you alone are worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you. We recognize, Father, that with you all things are possible, but without you, we can do absolutely nothing. So even in this moment in time, we pray that you would just bless each household uh, that's tuned in. Uh, bless us, Father, and place those blessings where we need it the most. Uh, Father, we know that you are already in tune to our situations and circumstances of life. And we have not lost faith in you, Father. We trust in you, we hope in you. Our expectation is that you will show up and that you will provide the breakthrough, Father, and provide us with the faith that is necessary to hold on, Father, uh, to your unchanging hand. Uh, Lord God, we know that there's much 
uh, unrest in our world. And uh, we just pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with those who lead us, be with our politicians. Uh, Father, be with our policy and government uh, uh, policy makers and those that are in government, those government officials. Father, we know that uh, there are times, Father, when we uh, don't know where to go. We don't know who to turn to. But when that time comes, we are assured of the fact that we can always find a pavilion uh, within your presence. And so, Father, we pray that you would usher us into the season of blessing, usher us into the season of trust and faithfulness, and help us, Father, uh, to encourage others along the way. Now, kind master, we thank you for South Union. We just pray that you would bless us here to continue to do your word and to be a beacon of light in this community. And Father, we pray that uh, you would lift us up on tonight and uh, bring us a fresh, powerful word. We know that you will, and we pray that we will be receptive and receive it into our lives. We thank you, we love you, always for Jesus Christ, heaven's precious gift. Uh, it is in his name and through the blood of Jesus we pray, in his saving name, the only name we know, in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen, amen. And now, family, let's get into the word. 1 Samuel 16, 1 Samuel 16, 1 Samuel 16, we will begin reading uh, with verse 14, 1 Samuel 16 and verse 14. If you have your electronic devices, navigate over, find your way, meet us or beat us to 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. And here you should find these mighty words. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp. And it shall come to pass that when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty, valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David his son unto Saul. And David came to Saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Oh, family of God, what a rich and uh, mighty word we have here. And we want to continue in our dissertation and study uh, from these words, the making of something great. The making of something great. Over the past several sessions of study, we have tabernacled from this theme and we have explored it and attempted to open up and unpack the truths that are embedded within this powerful pericope of scripture. Family, it is altogether important to realize that the Lord is working at all times. He has always a plan for our lives and the Lord, as a matter of fact, uh, when we don't know what to do, the Lord has already done. He's already provided. It is already accomplished in his eternal will 
uh, and purpose for our lives. I am convinced, family, that when we run uh, into times of difficulty and distress, I'm convinced that God has already provided the answer. He does not have to make ready because he's already ready. He stays ready. And uh, he has already provided for us. And what we must do is select the right uh, decisions and, and choose and make the right choices that God's blessings will continue to shower upon our lives. Yeah, there may be someone here who's studying with us even on tonight. And you may be in a situation, in a circumstance, a season where it is uncomfortable in your life. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes in our lives, uh, things get uncomfortable. Uh, I wish I had a witness on here with us tonight. Can we admit that sometimes things get uncomfortable? Can we admit that sometimes uh, uh, trouble is in our way? We have to cry sometimes. Uh, can we admit sometimes that we must get down on our knees and seek God's face and seek God's counsel? Uh, may we admit sometimes that we don't always get it right the first time, yet God is merciful and God is gracious. Uh, God gives us chance after chance. He gives us a new day. His mercies are new every morning, and we are here today not because we uh, have always selected the right option or selected the right or made the right decision, but we are here today because a mighty God woke us up this morning and uh, his grace uh, his grace is ever present in our lives. I want to pause here and just encourage someone um, that God is always uh, looking out for us. If we are going to be great people, if we are going to be great people of faith, we must understand that every season comes for a reason. Amen, somebody. I say every season comes for a reason. There's a reason that you are experiencing what you're uh, going through right now. There's a reason that you are having to climb and, and grab and, and, and pull your way up. There's a reason if you're in the valley. There's a reason for your being in the valley. If you are uh, waiting on the Lord, there's a reason for your wait. If you are trusting in God, but it seems like you have battle after battle after battle, there is a reason for each battle that you encounter. I just know Know that God uh, can be trusted and what we must do is rely on him throughout all of our days uh, to know that he will bring us through listen family every leader who becomes a great leader every leader who becomes something um, in society has to go through seasons has to go through cycles it does not always come at one time it does not always come at the same time I remember uh, season saints used to tell me long time ago uh, that if it comes easy, you can lose it easily. Uh, if it comes quick, uh, easy come, come on now, easy go. If you don't have to work hard for it, then that means you can lose it uh, quickly. Uh, we, we must understand that greatness uh, is a process and becoming great involves a series of events uh, in our lives and God uses many hands to help form us and to help uh, pattern our way but I want to encourage those who are listening who might be going through times of difficulty don't give up hold on God is doing some great things in your life he's going to use you he's using you already and uh, many times when we are in the waiting room of success how many people know what the waiting room of success is. Amen. What does the waiting room of success look like? Uh, it, it may look like holding on when you feel like letting go. It may look like dealing with uh, difficult people along your way in order to reach your desired destination. It may look like having to work with a, a difficult supervisor, uh, someone on the job, someone who uh, is antagonistic to your uh, progression and your future plans. But God has you in the waiting room for a reason. Uh, listen, family, how many of us have gone to the doctor? Amen. Uh, you know that before you see the physician, uh, you have to pass 
through the waiting room. And it's some necessary information that they need to receive from you at the counter in order to serve you well, in order to properly uh, treat you, in order to uh, give you what you need with medical care. There are some prerequisites that happen that must take place before you ever uh, encounter uh, your time with the physician. I want to encourage someone who is in God's waiting room right now. You're in the waiting room of success. You are in the waiting room of a breakthrough to hold on and understand that you must trust the process. God has you positioned here for a reason. You've been waiting for a long time, but understand that your waiting, your uh, waiting in that waiting room, that your, your sitting in that waiting room is to prepare you for greater moments uh, that are yet to come. Well, in this text, that's exactly what we see. Uh, we see this uh, story unfold about uh, King David uh, with King Saul. And uh, the reason I say King David with King Saul is because God has already anointed him. Now watch this. David is waiting on his appointment. But I'm encouraged to know, and I want someone to uh, be encouraged uh, as we study, that listen, before you are ever appointed, God will always give you the anointing. Watch this. The anointing governs your spirit and your attitude. It is easier to uh, position yourself to carry out the functions and the duties of the king when you live with a kingly mentality. Watch this. A kingly mentality is not a mentality that says I'm above this, but a kingly mentality is the mentality that says I'm involved in this. David understood his involvement. In order for God to place him and position him on Saul's throne, uh, he had to get David ready. And this is why we see in this particular text that David kept sheep. David, David understood what it, what it meant to do hard work, hard manual labor. He knew what it meant to protect a flock. He knew what it meant uh, to stay on guard. He knew what it meant to have vision and lead people. Listen, if you don't learn what you need to in the pasture, then how can God ever use you in the palace? Talk to me and hear somebody. God wants to use you, but God needs you in the pasture. He needs you out working. Sometimes you have to get your hands dirty. Sometimes you have to get down on your knees and do the job right. And sometimes you have to understand that this season is for a reason. David received tremendous training. We've already articulated in previous sessions of study that David had a godly influence, amen? His father, Jesse, was involved in his life and, and patterned, uh, he patterned himself after the humility and after the heart of a servant. Jesse had the heart of a servant. And you know, there comes a time when that baton, when those who are running ahead will pass that baton to those who are running behind. And here it is, uh, Jesse is in the midst of passing the baton to David and David is ready for the moment why because David has been well prepared it is the Bible that says your gift will make room for you watch this David the Bible says is in a situation where he's about to assist the king he's about to enter into the king's court King Saul has been vexed uh, with an evil spirit I don't have time uh, to unpack for you. Uh, maybe at a later time uh, we can unpack this. Uh, but an evil spirit from the Lord. And he's vexed with this evil spirit because the spirit of God, according to the scripture, has departed from him. Whenever you see people do evil things, the spirit of God is not with them. An evil spirit is troubling them. And, and even in this particular passage, God's spirit has departed from Saul for Saul has chosen to do things his way and he has forsaken God's way. 
And so an evil spirit has come upon him. His countenance is, is, is transformed. And it is recorded historically that King Saul had a, a very uh, hot temper. He was easily angered and easily frustrated, easily agitated. And so his servants come to him and they are attempting to assist him. And here's their recommendation. Their recommendation is that they, uh, he receive some musical therapy. Amen. Musical therapy. How many people know that music has her place? Music helps to set the mood. Music helps to set the tone. Amen. I wish I had somebody who could uh, help me preach and teach for a little while who could admit to times before they were saved. How many people remember before you were saved? You remember that era <laughs> before you were saved. And, and if we are honest about it, even after we've been saved, there have been some times where we enjoy good music. How many people enjoy good music? I'm talking about good, wholesome music. I'm talking about music that encourages you and, and, and can inspire you. But music helps to improve the situation. It helps to improve the temperature of the room. It, it helps to improve a person's attitude and outlook many times because it relaxes the mind. And so uh, his advisors, Saul's advisors, the king's advisors, give him this uh, prescription. They say that you need some good music. They say you need some good music. And uh, one of the advisors says, you know, I know where you can find some good music. You can go down to Jesse's house, the Bethlehemite, and he has a son named David. <laughs> Don't miss this family. The advisors to King Saul knew where to go. They went to a godly house to receive encouragement. You know, it's a beautiful thing when you know where to go. There are some houses that you look forward to going to. Why? Because you receive godly encouragement, amen? I'm not talking about any mess. I'm not talking about any gossip. I'm not talking about uh, who shot John. I'm talking about godly encouragement and godly advice and so they recommend him to go to Jesse's house and and there's a, a man uh, at Jesse's house his son David and he's in the pasture watch this now he's in the pasture he's working see many times in order to receive your breakthrough you have to be doing something right now in this season you know, they tell me that it's easier to get a new job when you already have a job. You have to be doing something. Be productive. Be prayerful. And then be a person who produces. Don't wait on things to just happen. Pray. And make sure that you're doing all that you can so that God, when things are ready to take place, you are ready to step into that role. I remember growing up playing basketball and uh, being a freshman and being blessed to dress out with the uh, varsity team. Knew I wasn't gonna get a chance to play, but I was just happy to dress out. And you know, all of the freshmen who were blessed to dress out, who were afforded this opportunity to, to dress out with the varsity players, uh, we would go into the locker room and I can remember quite vividly uh, they would uh, give us tasks and menial assignments to, to do and, and send us on errands, you know, take this here, uh, do this, freshman, do that. We call it, in our society, paying your dues. Come here for a moment. There is something to be learned in paying dues. David was paying his dues in the pasture and he didn't even know that the palace awaited him on the other side. Don't allow your moments of pastoring to cause you to lose sight of what God is doing in his purpose. Because in his purpose might be a palace. But you'll never know it if you skip the season of the pasture. David is in the pasture. He's learning how to lead. And as he learns how to lead, he also is known 
Listen to his reputation. A mighty man of valor, a mighty man of war. He's a musician. Watch this. He's a musician. If his pastoring taught him how to lead and how to protect, his musicianship meant that he was skilled with words. He receives two high-level positions in the king's court. He is an advisor. He is a musician in the king's court. But then also, he is appointed to the armor bearer. Isn't it interesting that the musician and the armor bearer found in the same person, David? The musician means that he's skillful with words. Armor bearer means that he's skillful with weapons. Come here closely. These two positions are not anywhere close to being the same. Music, some may say, well, that's the soft side. Armor bearer, some may say, well, that's the tough side. I'm encouraged to see that you need both to compliment you. You need both. You see, a leader shouldn't be all easy, but he shouldn't be all rough and tough at the same time. You have to be even-handed, amen? Even-handed, because certain situations call for certain responses, and every situation should not solicit the exact response or the same response. You have to be even-handed. Isn't it interesting to see in the text that he was a comely person? Watch this now. David was considered an attractive person, but he was not just attractive because of his outward adornment or his outward physical appearance. He was attractive because of the weight of his heart, the direction of his heart. Uh, he had a, a heart that was set on serving God. And if we're going to be great in this day and time, we must be set on serving God. Amen. God is looking for those who have their heart placed on him and not involved in uh, frivolous matters that will not transport beyond this world. David was pleasant to be around. He had a lot going for him. He was a skillful man, man of valor, man of war. He was a great pastor in the pasture, shepherding sheep. Uh, he was a musician. He was skillful with words, and, and he knew how to put words to, to tune to music. Amen? And then he was an armor bearer at the same time. He was the one who stayed right with the king. Now, he could have taken this attitude, well, I'm the anointed one, and since I'm the anointed one, I'm not going to subject myself to this kind of service. But no, David did not adopt that type of attitude. His attitude was I'm going to serve at the level where God has placed me and I'm going to serve with all of my might. I'm going to make sure that my God is glorified. Watch this now. The text reveals that he found favor in Saul's sight. Don't miss this family. He found favor in Saul's sight. But the favor he found in Saul's sight was not anything to be compared to the favor he found in the sight of God. Amen, someone. The Bible says that the Lord was with him. And family and friends, whenever you are going through times of distress and major decision points that you find in your life, you need the Lord with you. If no one else is with you, I just need the Lord with me. I need to know that the Lord is with me, that the Lord will provide for me, that the Lord, here it is, will open doors for me. And the Lord will do just that. The making of something great. Come on, say it with me. The making of something great. There's much more to be explored in this text. But as we hasten toward a conclusion, I want you to know that your season is for a reason. I want you to work now 
Don't wait to work. Let's work now. Let's be faithful right now because our faithful, faithfulness right now will be rewarded in the future. Don't wait to be faithful. Be faithful over a few things. The Lord will make you rule over many. Family, learn how to pay your dues. Learn how to be patient. Learn how to wait on the Lord. Here it is, family. David had to wait on the Lord. He had to wait at least 15 years from his anointing to his being appointed king. But during that time, the Lord was taking him through a process of growth and maturation. Joseph had to wait 14 years from when he received the dream to when he was uh, in the king's court and to when he was second in command in Egypt. 14 years. He had to wait a long time. Success doesn't happen overnight. But that doesn't mean you won't be successful. God wants to do something great in your life. And we just must have the courage to hold on. All the way through. Amen. Do you receive this into your spirit? Lord knows I pray that you do. Listen, we want to take this time and invite you uh, to pray with us. We pray at South Union. We're a praying church, and we know that prayer changes things, and prayer will change us as we go through the things that we experience. And so we pray every Sunday and every Wednesday between the 12 and 1 o'clock hour, we just go to God in a word of prayer. And, and listen, you don't have to pray all day long, but just find some time during the day to pray. But that 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock hour, we, we want to come collectively as a body, wherever you might be found, just pause and pray for this nation, pray for uh, the situation of the saints, or wherever they may be found, pray that God will continue to provide for us, pray that we will continue to trust him, pray for those that are sick, those who are infirm, those who are convalescing, those who are bereaved, those who are in prison, those who are homeless, those who are in poverty, let's pray for those who need prayer, and that would be all of us, family. And then we also want you to partner with us. And, and listen, if you need Bible study or if you need a special prayer, just call this number on your screen, 713-200-0055. This is our prayer and Bible study line. And we know that for every Bible question, there is, in fact, a Bible answer. We love you. And as we always say here at South Union, we love you. And there's not a thing that you can do about it. Until we're blessed to study again, you take care. The making of something great. Let God use you. God bless. And that's what I'm talking about. Come on, let's praise him together. Come on. Let's put your hands in there, y'all. Jesus. And I will live in witness right now. Hey, I'm ready right now. Ooh. We're ready, Lord. Yeah, yeah. We're, ready. We're ready to worship you. Worship you. Hey, hey. Listen. You brought us out. Yeah, this is my sin and shame. I'm telling you what it did for me, y'all. Uh huh. Oh, you can take those halos off. Cause we all have sin and fallen short of the glory of God. Come on, that's why. I praise you, Jesus. Yeah. Come on, saints. Time for us to quit being quiet up here. Praise him. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah, I need a believer up in here. Yeah, come on, my good friend Charlie from ASAP. Come on up here. Come on up here. Let's praise him. Oh, yeah. Oh